have said that earlier. So, so, so whatever's not faith. Everything Paul says isn't of the Holy Spirit. That's a fact. So, an end of discussion. So, an end of discussion. And if these guys don't believe in the full Bible, then So, an end of discussion. And if these guys don't believe in the full Bible, I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Ha Kodash. That's all praises to Yahweh the Heavenly Father in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy the Holy uh, Kodash Kodash Spirit, right? And double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, fellow believers. On as well to you, brethren, you you you, you brethren scattered, uh, leading and uh, following the flock, and shalom to you, few sisters. So anyway, shalom to the elect. So anyway, um, I'm gonna start off this video with a couple comments. Um, one so-called positive, one so-called negative, right? So it was in a video I did with Apostle Paul. Um with the thus say of the Lord that I said in that video. But first, um, let me read a comment real quick. It says, um, this guy calls himself a deacon, but the word is uh, only found in Apostle Paul's writings. So we can clearly see that this guy, Deacon Haka, in the Sakari sect, they in a past life had a they reincarnated they had a problem with apostle paul and if you have a problem with apostle paul you're going to have a, a problem with yahweh we'll get into that too so when we go here this is another one this brother here phil jackson uh 2063 i think i believe he was a follower of iuic if i can remember he's followed my channel for a long time He's come out of the IUIC or he's still with him. I don't know. He's all over the place. But anyway, it says, it did say, thus saith the Lord, <clears throat> right? Because I said in the video, it may not even it said it like that, which it said, just said, saith the Lord. Um, but he didn't understand what I was saying. But anyway, it says, now if we're wrong, we'll just say we're wrong. It says it was banned. It was banned to mention the name because of the Greeks decree. That's why the apostle and the king's general uh, not write and speak that way and uh, the way he did under the captivities of the Romans. And he says something about just pay attention, cost you nothing, right? But this is not the whole point. The whole point of the matter is when the apostle Paul said, thus say of the Lord, or let me say, say of the Lord, he was quoting out of the law and then there's at times uh dealing with the pharisees that he would say things we'll get into that just like yahweh Shai, right and it didn't seem to be lawful right we'll get that too so i don't know where he he didn't i guess understand or let me say he just spoke too quick without understanding the whole point of the video you know i think we know these things but i don't think Maybe he just got crossed with what I was saying, right? It says, Sirach 20 and, and uh, 5, there is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becomes hateful. Some man holdeth his tongue because he have not to answer, and some keepeth silence knowing this time. A wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity but a babbler and a fool regard no time, no time. So a lot of these guys, they get on the comment boards and they just pick up and they hear something and they bam, they jump on it, probably didn't listen to the rest of the video, but that's what they do. Without further ado, let's go into um, this about Apostle Paul, right? Um, now, first I want to go into Yahweh right? The situation with Yahweh and Mark, the third chapter. Let me see. I'm going to start at one, right? And just talking about Yahweh He entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had been withered, had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day. 
that they might cause him, accuse him. And he saith unto the man which he had had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, It is lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or is it to do evil with a question mark, to save his life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them, right, with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and the man stretched out his hand, and restored him to whole. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they may destroy him. So Paul was walking in the manner of Yahweh. This is what you saw. You wouldn't see, they would hold the law as to say, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. Although the second commandment says, love thy neighbor as thyself, or love thy brother. But you had them who was in a mindset of it's the laws, the uh, Sabbath days, so you can't do that. And you got to go into this time. This is what was happening. So when we go into Paul, right, we go into Paul, um, 1 Corinthians, um, this is going into the teachings of the marriage. 1 Corinthians 7, he says in 12, I'm going to go to 10. It says, uh, in eight, it says, I therefore, I therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them to abide even as I, right? And watch what, watch what he say. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Now you got to go into this time in Corinth and what was going on with the Greeks and the, the, the Hellenistic Israelites and what the heck was going on. Why don't you put yourself there? You can understand why he cut corners. Remember, he was, he went, you know, this was a spiritual man, right? Um, he says, um, and unto the married, I command ye not, I command yet not I, but the Lord. See right here? Let not the wife depart from her husband. Now he's saying, but the Lord, right? But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. But then this is what he says. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Right? And this is where the issue comes. Why is he saying this? This is the same thing we saw with Yahweh Right? Which he know he's the speaker of the, the Heavenly Father. There were certain things that were done that would have seemed contrary to the law. All right? Let's see. Let's keep reading. If any brother have a wife and believeth not, and she pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Why was he saying this? Because you got Israelite schools such as IUIC. And it's kind of crazy. They was This guy, Philip Jackson, was talking about uh, calling on the name, and the Greeks decreed them not to call on the name when the IUIC don't call on the name, but anyway, that's another video. <clears throat> anyway, and the woman which have an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him, <clears throat> right? Because the Pharisees, the wicked ones, they would have said, well, wait a minute. If they're not a believer, put them away. So this is why he had to go around, <clears throat> you know, that circle, so to speak, to introduce this so he can cut back on the adultery and the sleezing around and men passing women around. When you understand what was going on in the church, that's why he said, let a husband, um, let the husband, uh, uh, let the woman be the husband, uh, the wife of one husband, right? It wasn't that the man was supposed to have one wife. It was the fact that those wives, when you do the research, those women were already married several times over. So this is why he said, let the bishop be blameless. Now, bishops had more than one wife then too and be the uh, married to one woman, right? Let the bishop be blameless, the husband of one wife, meaning if she had 10 other wives, I mean, she had 10 other husbands and he didn't kind of know about it, and he would marry unto her and she would have been passed around 20 times over. That's another video too. So you got to see the me mechanisms of what he was going through. 
the mindset he had to be in to fix these people. And a woman have a husband that believeth not, and he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Now, this was the hopes that by keeping them together, they would convert. This is what this is all about. Else your children is unclean, but now are they holy. Now, when you go into the law, when you go into certain situations, men had concubines, wives, and so forth. But that wife had to believe. That wife would believe uh, as far as his wife. Like, you know, who, when you was a king or you was, you know, a man, your wife would believe what you believe in. Because you got to understand, you're not supposed to, at that time, you're not supposed to take uh, uh, unclean, any, anything unclean. So if you had an unbelieving husband or unbelieving wife, that wasn't good. So Paul was just trying to reiterate to fix the situation without causing a whole bunch of adultery. Because remember, they were already together. It wasn't like they got together. You got to understand, they just, they as being converted, you are already converted. So if I have a wife that's following Greek, that's being a Greek, and I wake up to the truth, I just can't kick her out because she didn't know. All right? Or vice versa. Uh, I believe Timothy's father practiced himself to be a Greek. Okay, let's look at a little more commentary. It says... But to the rest speak I not the Lord. This is what the commentary says. He has spoken before the married persons in general and had delivered not his own sentiments barely, but the commandment of the Lord that such should never separate from or put away each other in which he was respect. Um, let me see here. In which he has respect to such as were upon equal foot in the matters of religion, who were both of themselves believers in Yahawashah, but not, but now he speaks to the rest, to such as were unequally yoked, right? Remember the scriptures talking about unequally yoked to non-believers. <clears throat> but uh, it says the one of a believer and the other unbeliever, and that he delivers on his head, Concerning the, the, uh, their living together, there being no express determination of this matter by the Lord himself, uh, he under divine inspiration goes in a sense of it as that such marriages were valid and that such persons ought to live together and not separate on the account of differences of religion. Right? So, I don't know if the doctrine now is this this is not good that Paul said. So now if you get a if you have a wife and you come into the truth and she's not a believer, well I guess now you gotta cut her off, right? I'm saying according to these guys' doctrines. Okay? Now when you go to first Corinthians seven, all you gotta do is keep reading the whole thing. It says, But I speak by this permission and not of commandment. For I would uh I would that all men were even as I myself, right? Because you remember the scripture says, be fruitful, right? But every man have a proper gift of Yahweh, and after this manner, another after that. Now, for those who you believe in reincarnation, Solomon had many wives and concubines. But when the Messiah came on the scene, guess what? There was no need for that. And Romans 15 and 4 says everything is written for a four time for our learning today. So when you keep reading, the scriptures do talk about Paul saying, I wish he was as I, you know, who didn't marry, you know, abstain from marriage and stay focused and so forth because of all the wickedness. Now, let's go to Romans 3, right? It says, but now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law. And the prophets, even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is righteousness of God, which is in the faith of Yahweh. So we can see that Yahweh bringing back through the faith of our deliverance, not the law. This is clear. It's not strictly the law. 
because you had a lot of wicked Israelites who was following the law. Clearly, you see Yahawashai when he was working those miracles. They had borders of blue. They was keeping the laws, so forth, so-called. And they was being high righteous and high minded. So the, the Lord sent his son to bridge his elect back through faith in Yahawashai. That's the key. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. So anybody who's always boasting on the law, right, and saying the letters of Paul isn't real and it's all about the law, they're going off. We follow the law to the best of our ability because that's of the first commandment. Therefore, therefore we conclude that a man is not justified by faith without the deeds of the law right read revelation 2 and 10 that proves you that it's more than about the law because some of you are going to be put to death he said be faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life he didn't say follow the law unto death and then i will give thee a crown of life right that's the point so um anyway